Today we will talk about zero coupon bonds. Any bond is a debt certificate. There are three basic characteristics of a zero coupon bond. First, the issuer. It tells us who borrows the money. Second, the maturity. It tells us when is the money going to be repaid. Third, the notional. It tells us how much is going to be repaid at maturity. Note that who lends the money is not specified in the contract. This is how bonds are different from deposits or loans. Debt contracts for which both parties are specified. And the reason is that the lender who is the owner of the bond can change during the life of the bond. In other words, there is a market where bonds can be bought and sold. And if there is a market, there also must be a price. And today we will try to understand that price. Who issues bonds? Generally speaking, entities that need to borrow money and are big enough to do it on their own terms. Most importantly, governments. State governments, regional governments, municipalities. Pretty much all of them spend more than they collect in taxes. Therefore, they need to borrow money to finance the gap. Even the governments that usually have balanced budgets, like Germany for instance, have to issue new bonds to refinance or roll the existing debt. Secondly, big corporates. When they want to finance new projects, expand or buy smaller companies, they will finance it with issuing bonds. Even if they are flush with cash, like Apple, they still issue bonds for reasons like tax, that we will discuss later. Third, banks. The business model of a bank is generally to borrow money cheaply, lend money expensively, and cash in the difference. Okay, now how does a bond work? Usually, it is longer in maturity than one year. Standard maturities for bonds are 2 years, 10 years and 30 years. Let's look at 10 year bond example. So the buyer of the bond lends 100 to the issuer today and gets it back in 10 years. But would you accept just that as a lender? Probably not, right? You need to be paid interest as a compensation for your risk. There are basically two possibilities here. First is that the bond is issued at discount, so below its face value of 100. In this case, the interest is accumulated over the life of bond and is paid at maturity as full notional. We call this discount bond as it is normally issued at discount, or zero coupon bond as it pays no coupon. You probably guessed now what is the second possibility. Fixed coupon bond is a bond that is issued at 100 and pays interest in a form of fixed coupon. Let's say that 5% fixed annual interest rate is a fair compensation for the risk of borrower not paying back or defaulting. We say then that the bond yields 5%. We call this interest rate yield to maturity or simply yield of the bond. 
we invest amount equal to bond price. After one year, we have price times one plus yield and invest it again at same rate. We know that for two year bond, this amount will be equal to notional in two years and for 10 year bonds, same will be true in 10 years. In general, the notional will be equal to price times one plus yield to maturity to the power of years to maturity. We can use this relation to solve for yield to maturity. Yield is equal to the nth root of the notional divided by price minus one. Let's summarize what we learned about the zero coupon bonds today. Issuer of the bond is the same as the borrower. Maturity is the date when the bond is redeemed. Notional is the amount paid back on maturity if the borrower does not default. These three characteristics are written on the bond contract itself. They cannot change during the life of the bond. Then we have the owner of the bond, which is the same as the lender of money. Price is the value of the bond observed in the market. And the yield, the rate of return that justifies the current price of the bond. These characteristics are not written on the bond contract. They are observed in the market and can change during the life of the bond. In the next video, we will go deeper into the valuation of a zero coupon bond. I hope to see you there.